what is emergent relativity? And then maybe I'll just hear from both of you the ways you're tackling this problem. Well, all, all, all I mean is that um, I'm thinking of relativity, special and general relativity, in the normal way as theories of space-time structure. Um, special relativity just says the space-time structure is Minkowskian, so it has a light cone structure. There's, you know, a bunch of stuff that's well defined. If you write down your fundamental equations of physics, the space-time part that goes into it should be Minkowski space-time for a special relativistic theory, and only Minkowski space-time, nothing else. Uh, in general relativity, you then add curvature to that, but it's kind of the same deal. You have ne now need an equation to explain the curvature, but then you write down all the rest of your theory just in terms of the space-time structure of this curved four-dimensional manifold. Um, well, you can take that to be fundamental and absolutely correct, right? That fundamentally space-time has the structure postulated by special or general relativity, and you can take that as a constraint or you can think, no, maybe at a deeper level, at a more fundamental level, it's not like that at all, okay? In particular, in relativity, there is no preferred foliation. There's no slicing up of the space-time into, as it were, successive moments of time, the way Newton had. Um, that seems to be something we need because of the non-locality the violations of locality that we see in the lab by violations of Bell's inequality. My feeling is, okay, put it back in, right? Um, Einstein, Einstein put a preferred foliation back put in. Put a preferred foliation. Einstein had good reason to get rid of it because he didn't need it. But he, he didn't need it because he was trying to recover theories, namely Maxwellian electrodynamics and Newtonian gravity, that couldn't violate Bell's inequalities. He didn't know that they were violated. He didn't know what they were. Okay, now we know what they are. We know they're violated. We know that no local theory can work. The easiest way to write down non-local theories in a clear mathematical formalism is to have a preferred foliation. Let, let me make a comment here. Um, if preferred foliation sounds like sort of an arbitrary thing only from the point of view of relativity, from the point of view of conceptual structure of space and its relation to time before relativity, it would be silly to, preferred foliation would be a very strange way to talk about the situation in which what's fundamental is stuff spread over three-dimensional space and that changes with time. Right. Right. Yeah, I was going to add, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. I know that Tim, you have a, a very different belief about time from yeah. uh, David Albert and and Barry Lower. You take time as being fundamental, and because of this, is that something that leads you to desire a, a preferred foliation? That, that's no. The, 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 there are several different issues here. The ones with Barry and David. Let's just leave aside because they're they're good issues, but they're they're a different discussion. This one is just, do, do you want to say at a fundamental level, there is this slicing, as it were? Um, physicists are extremely, extremely conservatively, sometimes rabidly opposed to such a suggestion, right? They'll say, oh, that's going back to Newton or something, although it isn't. And then you say, well, I do have a reason for wanting to do this, namely non-locality, okay? And, and the fact, as Shelley says, the wave function is defined on configuration space. The notion of a configuration depends upon what's where are all the particles at a moment, right? That's what a configuration is. So then the next question is, well, gee, but if there's this preferred slicing, why does relativity work so well? Because it sure does work well. And there are lots of predictions that you get out of relativistic considerations that turn out to be accurate. Then I think you want this idea of, well, yeah, I want relativity to emerge in exactly the same way that we want something like Newtonian mechanics to emerge. We want something like Newtonian gravity to emerge from general relativity, even though it's fundamentally different conceptually. Why? Because Newtonian gravity works really well empirically. It better emerge in that sense. Yeah. We want something like Newtonian mechanics to emerge. We want something like Maxwellian electrodynamics to emerge from quantum electrodynamics. Why? 
because it's a pretty good theory. You know, it's not exactly right, but it makes lots of good predictions. You better have a compelling reason to believe that in a certain regime, those predictions ought to be pretty, pretty near on target. So I think you want similarly an understanding of why if space-time isn't fundamentally relativistic, nonetheless, relativistic structure emerges from it. So it's not such a surprise that various heuristics work. I mean, I, that's what I'm working on. I think that's the right way to go. Is that the same motivation for why you're working on it, Jelly? What Tim said, is, I agree with everything Tim said. Now, I suppose the way to implement that, we, Tim and I are working in probably different directions in the implementation, but in the description of the kind of project that Tim described, yeah, oh, I totally agree. Well, I'm looking, I'm working on this with Nino Zangi. I've been working with him on this sort of question issue for many years, and we make extremely, extremely slow progress. Part of the reason we make such slow progress is we're mathematically incompetent in the subject matter because the mathematics is well, way beyond our expertise. That's one problem. The other problem is we, we start, we're working on it. We work on this stuff when we meet every six months. And once we, once we meet again after six months, we've forgotten almost everything we had discussed the last time. So we almost have to start from scratch again. That really does slow down the work. But the bank, and this is true, and I, I told Nino, and you should you should say, why don't you take the notes? I'll tell Nino, take notes on it so we don't have to start from scratch. And it never seems to work out for some reason. So we always have to start from scratch again. Anyway, it's fun. But it is a bit frustrating when we realize, what the hell did we say six months ago? And it's, you know, it's not, Tim is young. He can still remember things like that. Nino and I have trouble remembering what we were doing, what, what we thoughts we'd had six months ago on the subject. Some of them were tricky thoughts, too. Um, but something that plays a role... We've, we've been focusing on something called geometrodynamics, which means an evolution, a natural evolution, some kind of natural evolution for three-dimensional geometries changing. Let me say changing in time, to use the conventional term. Now... What plays a crucial, there's a natural way of going from an evolving three geometry to a four geometry. There are, in fact, many natural ways, many ways of doing it. These different ways of doing it correspond to what you could call different gauges. What plays an important role in our, in our thinking is the huge gauge symmetry, which you have at your disposal. It could turn out that when you exploit the gauge symmetry, there's going to be a gauge which leads you to a kind of structure which is the very convenient structure because in terms of this gauge, you have much more symmetry than you, you thought you had as a gauge choice. And that symmetry that you, which arises as a gauge choice could be the Lorentz symmetry of special relativity. Now, we're very far from any success in this direction. But it's it's and it's too difficult for us mathematically. But it does seem, it seems to me, if we had the math, the mathematical ability, it would be quite promising. Uh, I, I'll, I'm just going to add. This is going to be incomprehensible to, to all but very few people. But to understand why we're going in different directions, I'm not aiming for Lorentz gauge. I'm aiming for Coulomb gauge. Oh, I don't. I would. I don't. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't mean Lorentz gauge. I'm Lorentz symmetry. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tim, are you also are you working on the mathematics of this, or are you working on the philosophical? I, I, I'm working on the mathematics of what I'm doing because I made up the mathematics of what I'm doing. I'm doing something. I mean, I'm working on ways of thinking that space time could fundamentally be discrete um, and not a continuum at all. And is that something that you have a? Uh, an intuition about? Well, I have the intuition that it hasn't been studied enough, right? I mean, already <laughs> Zeno understood it could go either way, right? And he has paradoxes for continua and paradoxes for discrete. Um, many 
physicists say with not much to back it up that, oh, of course, it'll be discrete because at Planck scale, blah, blah, blah. But there's no, as far as I can tell, there's no good arguments there. And then, then they say it's, oh, it's all foamy and kind of, you know, chaotic. I don't know. Mine isn't foamy and chaotic at all. It's very simple, discrete little structures. If you do it the way I'm doing it, um, you're just going to have a foliation built into it. You can't kind of can't, you can't do anything like what I'm doing and, and avoid there being a preferred foliation. So that's coming for free. Um, about the only way to, to do something discrete that doesn't really have one is more like what Faye Dowker and, and Raphael Sorkin do, this causal set stuff. Um, that's also discrete, but they do it in a way that's supposed to maintain Lorentz symmetry at a more at a fundamental level. I break that symmetry at a fundamental level. That's why I want it to emerge at an emergent level, right? So that it's not a mystery why relativity works so well. Um, but as far as I know, Shelley's not trying to do anything discrete at all. I mean, the the shape dynamics he's doing is all continuous, and so we're doing very different things. But of course, that mathematics of what I'm doing is, is really simple because. I, I take yeah. I, I make the bug a feature, right? I'm not a good yeah, mathematician, yeah. so I can maybe only do really simple. To, maybe we should switch to discrete because then we can handle the mathematics. <laughs> no, I have nothing against discrete. Some people find it. No, that's perfectly, it's certainly something important to, to explore. No reason why that couldn't be right. We don't know what's right.